Namaste. Hi. I am Dr. Krishna Kumar. I am a neurosurgeon. Today I am going to discuss about gliomas. Gliomas are the most common primary brain tumors. To be precise, it comprises about 80% of the primary malignant brain tumors. These gliomas usually arise from the, the supporting cells of the neurons in the brain, called as the glial cells. These cells, the brain tumors are graded rather than staged. In either the, any other tumors in the body, they are staged. But in brain tumors, they are graded according to the histopathological gradients. They usually range from grade 2 to grade 4, these gliomas. These gliomas are most commonly seen in the middle age and older age pupils. And these gliomas tend to vary from the clinical spectrum of presentation. Most commonly, they present with headaches and seizures. And depending upon the location of the tumors, the presentation varies as well as the size of the tumor also dictates the patient symptoms. The most common symptom being, as I said earlier, it's headache and seizures. And these, tum these brain tumors are uh, brain tumors arise from the supertendal part of the brain. That is the supertendal part of the brain. That is the concept of frontal, temporal, parietal, and occipital lobe. These tumors are most commonly arise from the frontal temporal lobes. And the symptoms vary with the location of the tumor, especially if the tumors are located near by the electron cortex, like if it is nearby the motor tracts, that is primary uh, primary motor area, sensory area, or speech area. According to the location, the symptomology differs. As the age progresses, the grade of the tumors also increases. As the, if, the, if the tumor seen in the age more than 50 years into 60 years, it mostly presents in grade 4 lesion. Whereas in the younger age group, and the middle, middle, middle aged people, it is mostly in a grade 2 or grade 3 gliomas. As the grade worsens, the patient survival also worsens. The grade 2 gliomas are most surgically excisable and can be cured in some varieties like oligodendrogliomas with chemotherapy and radiotherapy following surgery. So, after the, the, the mainstay of diagnosing this kind of tumors is MRI. So nowadays, like, with three Tesla MRI, we can do a lot of whole lot of different types of studies like perfusion imaging, functional imaging, their diffuser tensor tracking. These these images add add to the extra information for the surgeon to analyze and to operate safely on these patients. After imaging, the mainstay of treatment is the surgery. In surgery, one has to select. Between one has to, one, uh, the doctor has to weigh what kind of approach he is taking for this patient. If it is uh, the location of the tumor is in the eloquent cortex, then he has to plan for an uh, awake craniotomy. Awake craniotomy, in that, in, during the surgery, the patient is awake, he is totally aware of what's going on, and we ask to pre uh, perform different sets of tasks while performing surgery so that we want to give a full functional preservation for the patient at the end of the surgery without any neurological deficits. So, the mainstay of in glioma patients is come as possible you want to completely excise the lesion if possible if the lesion is located during towards the eloquent cortex like motor area sensory area speech area along with neuromonitoring intra neuromonitoring with awake craniotomy we can safely resect as much as possible without giving any deficits then the whatever the biopsy material we collect in the intro that has to be completely subjected for the histopathological analysis histopathological analysis is it's not only it's not restricted only to the what kind of cells they see. It's also about the molecular analysis of the tumor. The IHC markers play a major role in the survival of these patients. So the IDH mutations, uh, TRAT mutations, ATRX mutations, and MGMT promoter methylations, these play a major role in the prognosis of these patients. And after the IHC, then we categorize the patient for further treatment. For grade 2 gliomas, if you have completely excised the lesion and according to the IHC markers and the age, we subject this patient for radiotherapy along with temozolomide, concurrent dose of temozolomide. If the patient is engaged, if the lesion is completely excised, there is no sign, if there is no any residual lesion in the MRI, follow up MRI, then we just follow the patients with frequent MRIs at every 6 months without planning for uh, either the chemotherapy or radiotherapy. If any sign of progression or any signs of recurrence in these patients in the follow-up study, then immediately we subject either for 
chemotherapy or even we may subject for redo surgery followed by radiotherapy. Then comes to the high grade lesions, especially glioblastomas. These gla the grade 4 lesions are called glioblastomas. These are very aggressive lesions. They tend to invade along the white matter tracts in the brain. So the survival of this patient depends upon the extent of resection of the tumor and the kind of the types which you get in IHC markers. That's histopathological grading along with IHC markers with which are the posture and followed by chemoradiotherapy. The mainstay of chemoradiotherapy and surgery in this patient is surgery to decrease the volume of tumor so that we can downstairs, we can uh, decrease the total volume of cyto cyto reduction of the tumor followed by subjecting the residual tumor for radiation and chemotherapy. If the, this, uh, if the again the tumor occurs following the tumor and radiotherapy, these patients may require the targeted chemotherapy like bevacizumab in second setting. But overall, the grade 4 lesions have very poor prognosis. We can just increase the survival of this patient by a few months follow with chemo and radiotherapy following surgeries. See, it's, it's necessary to understand these gliomas if the, if the patient is having low grade gliomas. Please, please, uh, please subject to surgery as soon as possible if the patient comes to any, any doctor clinic. Kindly survive surgery followed by radiotherapy, depending upon the IHC markers. Thank you.